them on <laughs> from happily ever after etc and welcome back to another travel video so you may know because i've been posting the videos religiously that mom and i recently took a cruise a european cruise on the carnival pride for 21 days 21 days so this was my first european cruise mom's been on i've been on two two other ones so this was a back-to-back -back cruise. So that means it wasn't one cruise for 21 days. It was two cruises, the first for 12 days and the second for nine days. So the first cruise was the Baltic Sea. And then the second cruise went from the Bay of Biscay down through the Mediterranean. So essentially we cruised from London to Rome, although we went all over in between. And I hope y'all can hear us because our dogs and our neighbor's dogs are singing to each other. Isn't it beautiful? So I figured we'd start with doing a little, little recap, a little question and answer session um, today. So I figured we'd start just by going over the itinerary. So we started in London, although essentially we ported out of Dover, England. We went to London. Early. Yes, so we stayed in London for three days before we went down to Dover, drove down to Dover on a big coach, and then we got on the ship, the Carnival Pride, in Dover, not in London. London has no ports, you can't cruise out of London. So then from there, we went, got a little cheat sheet here. It's 21 days is a lot. A lot of ports to remember. So the second day was Copenhagen and then Germany. So we ported in Germany in a very industrial port. I can't even say it, but we went on an excursion to Schwerin and Bismar. Bismar. Bismar and Schwerin. I cannot say these names. I've been trying so hard. I'm getting better. I'm much better. If you go back and watch that video the first time I say it is not so good. So we did go on an excursion there. A lot of the people on the ship took a train all the way into Berlin. Three hour train, which I decided, eh, not good. Three hours one way. So as much as we wanted to see Berlin, we just didn't want to take that long of a trip when we were only there for one day. We wanted to use our time more wisely and not get super car sick. So we took a uh, excursion closer to the port. We wanted to see a German castle. I did. That's a good. Mom's seen a lot of German castles. So from there we went to Estonia, which Mom was very excited oh, yes. about. Estonia was gorgeous. Yes. Somebody said it was like a fairy tale. I thought that was a good explanation. It was. And honestly, like I've been a lot of places, but I hadn't really heard of Estonia as far as being a place to visit, like top of your bucket list place, but a lot of people really liked it. Yes. I was surprised how big of a draw it was on the overall tour. It was beautiful. It was really yeah. nice. And then the next day was Helsinki, Finland, where we almost missed the ship. Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, is that because you couldn't get the bus to get back on? Because we were, we we were the hop on, hop off bus. And our tour guide decided at one point, he was going to take a lunch break, and so he got off the, the bus, and he left for 30 he minutes. Back. He didn't come back. And he might have said that he was doing that in Finnish, but he did not say it in any other language. And I would say 90% of the people on the Hop On Hop Off bus were not Finnish speakers. There was a lot of Americans, right. a lot of English speakers um, from the UK. There's a lot of um, French and German and Italian speakers, but very few Finnish speakers. So we were all very confused, all universally not able to speak to each other confused. But we got back and we made it in like 10 minutes to spare. The but bus, by the time the bus driver came back, he took us to our ship first. We told him like how because worried we were. And so he, so he skipped a lot of the last like two, three hop on, hop off spots. And he just went back to the port. So we made it and he took us before he took the other ship back. We had an earlier port call. So then from 
um, there we went to Kiel, Germany, where we ended up just walking around the town and we took a taxi over to Pandora, which biggest draw on every port is always Pandora. I have two videos to telling you where the Pandora store is in each port because we made it in all but one, two countries to the Pandora store. And then Gothenburg, Sweden was the last port on that trip. We were supposed to go to Stockholm, Sweden, but the weather was not they picking. They didn't plan it that way, and they had us at a... We were supposed to go to Russia, but obviously that's not going to happen. But the, 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 the pier for um, Stockholm was a floating pier, and it, the way, it was two waves, too many waves, and too windy, so we couldn't dock. So the normal port in Stockholm still was active that day, and the, the actual weather in town was fine, but the floating dock was not fine. And I'm glad we didn't risk that, because that's the last thing we need is to get off on a floating port in bad weather. <laughs> Let's not say we did. So that's the end of the first port, and we had one, two, three, four sea days on that first yeah, cruise. Yeah, nice. It was Comfortable. It was a good enough of breaks. We had a lot of breaks in between our um, excursions. Yes. So then the second ship went, same ship, same cabin, same steward, same people, different crews. Went from Dover to um, France. So we ported in Le Havre, which is another industrial port. A lot of people, again, took a three-hour excursion into Paris. Three hours. And then three hours back from Paris. They were in Paris for an hour. They said they literally were on a bus flying by things. They said they only went by the Eiffel Tower in one direction. So if you were on the right side of the bus, mom saw the Eiffel Tower. Me on the left side of the bus, I didn't even get a picture. People were very upset. That was too bad. But that's why we didn't do that. We went ahead and we took an excursion with Viator.com. We did a couple with them. Yes. And we went to Giverny and Rouen, Rouen, yeah. which is, of course, Monet's home and gardens. And we saw the water lilies and these gardens. So the rest of our tour had a good time. But our poor little tour guide, Adrian, kept having to come find me mom. We stopped to smell and see every single flower. And he was like, ladies. Ladies, where are you? Yes. So, uh, we finally made it through. All right, next up, we went to Spain. So, walk from the Spain. Here's to the first. We did a taxi. I'm not even walk a lot. No. We walked. We had a tour later on. So then the next day was Porto, Portugal, and then Lisbon, Portugal, which was interesting. I'd say Portugal is probably my least favorite country. I enjoyed but Portugal, but it's a lot like Spain, of course. I think it was my least favorite because of the tour guide, not because of the city or the town, which were beautiful. But our tour guide was like, hustle, 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 beat, beat, beat. And we were running down these little streets for four hours across a bridge over the river through the woods we didn't even get to grandmother's house so it just made the whole excursion a little less enjoyable although the things we stopped and saw were great i mean the cathedral mom likes the port and the the winery that we stopped at we did a port, so, port tasting and i got some bottles of port to bring home and then fun. the next day in Lisbon, we had a much smaller tour, and that one was much better. But it was still only four hours, so while we had much more time in each place, we stopped as a day. As a day, our our fierce protectors had to protect us. So then, um, Portugal, we had two days. It was nice. It just. I'd like to spend a little more time there so it didn't have to be so rushed. From there, we went back to Spain. So we ported into Seville, Spain. But where did we go? We went to, because it, it wasn't Seville. Cadiz. 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 Yep. And then from Cadiz, the next 
spot was Cartagena, which was one of my favorites because we went to a Spanish horse show. Sugar is trying to get that fly. Get it, Shuggy. Woo. Um, but unfortunately, that was the first day I didn't feel so good. I had like a 24-hour bug. So, of course, it was better the next day, which was a sea day. And then we went back into Rome. So that was the entire itinerary. If you want to go on a long cruise like this, it's nice to have um, two different itineraries so you get to see as much as possible as opposed to booking a back-to-back -back where the itinerary is identical. Although I suppose there is a, a charm to an identical itinerary. You would have more time in those places. Right. But... For the money, you know, when you're going to Europe from the U.S. specifically, your flight is the most expensive expense. And so when you're there, you want to see as much as you can possibly see. And I like that a cruise, A, lets you see a lot, but also gives breaks in between. Because when we've gone just on normal vacations in Europe, you're go, go, going. I said earlier, it's like when you need a vacation from your vacation. And so I didn't necessarily feel that way when we got back from the cruise. I felt like once we got over the jet lag, we get right back to life. So that was nice. So, all right, so on to the questions. Oop, somebody's coming to see us. Dog alarm. It's gonna go off. All right, so first, first question. Highlights. What was your favorite port? It was a concert between Estonia, Estonia and Javarne. Uh, Those are my two favorites. Javarne was definitely my favorite. I think we were supposed to go to Javarne back right after 2007. 2007, right after I graduated high school. So for me, that was definitely a a long time coming, but I'm glad we didn't go in 2007 because while I loved seeing his house and the paintings and the water lilies, a huge part of the whole Giverne experience was the gardens. And I really only have gotten into gardening in the last year or two, so I don't think I would have appreciated it the same way. Oh, they're just walking around talking. This is great. Our friends are coming back. So from there, I think Germany, Sparheim, especially Sparheim Castle, was probably my second favorite. I've never been to a German castle, and I found Germany really magical. So those were my top two. All right, so you've taken a European cruise before. This was my first one. What would you say is different from a European cruise to a Caribbean cruise? Um, a Caribbean cruise is more <laughs> relaxing. Even when you get off the ship, a lot of times you can We might walk around shopping, go shopping, but even our excursions on a Caribbean cruise are things like swimming with the stingrays, swimming with the dolphins, maybe zip lining. Like they're more fun activities versus versus cultural historical. Walking, 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 learning. You're, you're learning a lot, which is fun and interesting to learn the places, the history of these places. But it is exhausting in a way that swimming with a dolphin isn't. Well, and especially in Europe, the ports are very close together. So, I mean, our second cruise. We had five court days in a row. Yeah. Five in a row. Which is a little long. more. Whereas yeah. in the Caribbean, you have to go a little further usually. And so you usually have um, a court day, a sea day, a court day, a sea day, or two court days and a sea day. You very rarely, I think, Sometimes our, have to our cruise out of Puerto Rico. Since you were going out of Puerto Rico, you're already there in a sense. We had a lot more. 
we had like six court days on that cruise. That was a lot in a row. But again, you can just throw a beach day in the middle of all those and relax. And relax. It's different. As opposed to you don't want to be like, oh, we're in France. Let's just relax today. We'll see Germany tomorrow. You're like, no, we're in France today. Let's go see France. Let's go. So it's it's a lot of go, go, going. What would you say you would do differently for your next European cruise? Which, spoiler alert, mom's going on her next European cruise in like two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I don't get to go, so y'all have to help me convince her to video some of it for you. Um, Know that I would do anything different on that I thought it was all pretty well. I know what she would do different because she's talked about it a lot. She said she would bring half as many clothes. Well, that is true. We brought a lot of clothes and we thought we didn't. I brought four or five nice shirts, four or five t shirts, and four pairs of pants. And I still felt like I only wore half of them. Yeah, and, and the big part of that is because. Um, I get free laundry, yes. so we could wash more clothes and not have to lug around as much. And even if you don't get the free laundry, like I'm not platinum yet, so I don't get free laundry, although I do when I'm with her, um, they do have washing machines on right. the ship, so you can get some little tiny laundry detergent things and just wash your clothes while you're there. It's not hard to do. And I would bring fewer bags because yeah. that was hard, was carrying all the bags well, through the airport, not because I brought too many bags, but because someone decided it would be much easier for her if I carried all the big bags. Yes. And she just ran ahead with one of the small ones. I had the two small bags and she had the two big bags. Yeah. You know, 10 I, out of 10 do not recommend. I am twice as old as her. Um, the other thing, I wouldn't necessarily we'd say we'd do different, but mom did order a bunch of stuff to upgrade her cruising life. She ordered oh, yeah. a new backpack. So we brought tote bags, which is what we normally do in the Caribbean. That was not great. You definitely want to get a locking one so that people can't just go in them. But she ordered a backpack. I ordered a backpack that has a travel backpack. And I can has a specific place for your laptop or yeah. your tablet and a USB port so you can charge. That was another big thing that we had a problem with. Charging. Was keeping our phones charged to take photos or to take videos or anything. And I bought a, she uh, bought a heavy duty charger. Portable charger. We have a normal portable charger. Of course, our neighbor decided to mow right now. <laughs> But we bought, she bought a heavy duty one that can charge two devices and can be solar charged or plugged in. So I'm thinking that will make a big difference for her next yes. trip. Yes, it will. And then she also bought some heavy duty magnetic hooks. When you're on a cruise for four or five days, if the cabin gets a little out of order, it's not as bad. But for 21 days, we tried to keep everything very organized and clean. And the walls are magnetic. Yes. So you can put these magnetic hooks on the wall and hang things up. And the main thing we wanted to hang up was our tote bags or our backpacks because we had places for our clothes, we had places for our suitcases, we had places for our toiletries and my laptop, but we kept just having to toss our tote bags on the couch. And then when you want to sit on the couch, you have to move your hat and your coat and your tote bag to the bed. Yes. So if we could hang those everyday things we're using up, that would help a lot with just cabin maintenance. Right. I think that's mainly everything we bought, but I'll link to all the stuff she found below because on the flight home, she was researching all kinds of stuff. She also bought a new carrying case for her headphones because she, oh yeah, I brought my Beats headphones. I love them. And she was like, do those make a big difference on the airplane? I was like, huge, yeah, huge difference. Huge difference. Giant. So she, she decided she to start traveling with those and she bought a new hard case for hers yeah. to keep in her new backpack. In my backpack with my new charger and my case for my new charger. <laughs> 
I think that's pretty much all the questions. Um, the only question else would be what would you be different? And we kind of already addressed that. I think mainly just maybe research a little bit. I would say research well, a little transportation, more. Transportation um, options. Like the problem we had in, in London wasn't even, I don't even think it was any lack of research. It was that they were having a strike. They were having a metro strike one metro. day. And, and then bus. a bus strike the next day. And, and so that made it really hard to get around. And then from there, you know, we only booked excursions through either Viator.com or Carnival because we had a lot of onboard credit about half the time. And we figured the other half of the time, we just get off and grab the hop on, hop off bus. Because a lot of times in the Caribbean, that's available. But not everywhere in Europe was that available. And we'd ask people at the cruise terminal, and they had no idea. They didn't know where it was. They didn't know where it was. They didn't know what it was, even though you'd see it driving all around. So I would say research, even if you're not doing anything specific, even if you just want to walk around, research. What's the transportation? Can you get a hop-on, hop-off bus? Is there Uber? There was no Uber in one of the places we went. I don't remember. But we couldn't get an Uber. Putting in a taxi. At one point, we opened Dover. Dover. We had to go into a little corner store and they had to call us a taxi and we had to wait half an hour for it to arrive. So, you know, don't always expect that these things will be available on your phone. Now, the other thing is we did do a data package on our phones yes. and tell them about that. Well, it was through. It was through our phone carrier, AT so AT and T is who we have, and and it's like for every day that you use your phone in a foreign country that's on their list, it's ten dollars, and it caps out at a hundred dollars. Right, it caps out. So for twenty one days, we I paid a hundred dollars, and then the second line, if it's on the same account, it's five dollars a day. Right. So if we just Smush that together and say what seven fifty each a day. That was one hundred. It was essentially one hundred and fifty dollars divided by two to have data on our phone. That meant we could get off at the port and call an Uber. We could use our maps. Use our maps, which was very helpful. We could call home a lot more than we have on any of our other European cruises. I could send photos to my dad. I could, you know, I called my brother from Harry Potter, the wizarding world, so that he could pick exactly which scarf he wanted. And which wand. And which wand. <laughs> which I did not think we were going to be able to do. So, you know, is that necessary? Not as much. You could totally make do with the Wi-Fi package on the ship and just Facebooking back home. But it was very nice. It was really helpful. And GPS. Well, and especially for us traveling alone, just the two of us, I felt like it gave us a lot more freedom. We felt like we could just go do things like, and because we knew at the end of the day, if we needed to call for an Uber or we needed some GPS, how to walk back to the ship, we weren't going to get lost. And that's a lot harder in today's world because there's fewer and fewer paper maps. So it's not like we can just grab a map and go because I mean mom and I can both read a map we can walk around a city fairly easily but that doesn't mean that we can get back on time that I think that's the hardest change for us is even what it was like almost 10 years ago we went last time with all the travel restrictions there's been having to like stuff that's been going on and uh you know I have a knee injury mom has a back injury so we can't do as much as fast as we used to. The other thing that was very helpful, which we didn't, I didn't know until we got there, was my credit card was one of those taps. Mom didn't know her oh credit card gosh, taps. That was fabulous. And everything we paid for, and you could pay for almost everything on your credit card. So there's only a couple of places that we put it. Only two or three. So instead of having to get euros or get yep. pounds or get, I think Estonia had different money. We pretty much were able to just use our cards almost everywhere we went. So that was a huge difference. Right. And I checked with my bank ahead of time. 
and I did not have to pay foreign transaction fees. So it was great that the tap was um, activated and I could just tap it and almost everybody did that. Um, and a lot of even their hop on hop off buses or like the Metro and the double decker bus in yeah, London, you can, you, can you can just get on and tap your card, which is right. nice. You don't have to get one of those Oyster cards anymore. Although you can, they're still available if you just have cash. So, the other thing that was helpful was, um, Oh, I did get want to get local currency. I got So you say you do want to get pounds or you do want to yeah. get euros. Because sometimes you uh, you're just buying a drink or you're just buying something small and you don't or you want to give your tour guide five, ten, ten pounds or twenty right. pounds, whatever it is. So um, and we really kept our cash down to a minimum. But I, I think I got two hundred pounds and I no, 100 pounds. We got 100 pounds and, and 200, 200 euros, euros for 21 days. And we, we spent literally our last euros on one of the last days when we were getting off the ship. Yeah, we gave the, we gave the, man a tip. the one of the porters a tip. Mm -hmm. And so, so it worked out. It great. worked out great. But the tapping, that really helped a lot. I mean, that's, I mean, Europe, I was just amazed at how, how good that was. That was very helpful. I mean, right. the last time we traveled, I think we had to travel with each other. Yeah. And they don't really do that anymore. No, thank goodness. All right, so if you have any more questions about this cruise, cruising in general, or Mom's next trip, which is on the Carnival Celebration, it's inaugural sailing. Yes, we're going from Southampton to Miami. From Atlantic. Two weeks. Seven days at sea. Seven days at sea. Here, look. Ports in Spain and Portugal again. And then a couple ports that um, I haven't been to. Um, and then seven days at sea, and then we pull into Miami. But two weeks straight. And um, just going with a friend of ours who's a travel agent. Yes. If you saw any of our videos that we did from our California cruise, what yeah. was that cruise? Yeah. The panorama, we went down to Mexico, Miss Kathy, same friend. And we are actually going to go to Paris ahead of time because we both just went to London, so we didn't need to go there again. So if you have any questions about that cruise, leave them below, yes. and we will do another video after she gets back. I want to know, I know I've heard that there's sometimes different things you get special for an inaugural sailing. I want to know what that means, if anything. Maybe that's just talk. I also saw on the group last night that they hired a corrigaturist. And so I want to know what kind of special stuff like that they're doing. And I also want to see your corrigature. So make sure you get one. Okay. <laughs> but for now, we're going to take Sugar and Princess and go on a walk. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get kisses for them. Princess will give anyone kisses. It's a problem. So we right. will see y'all on the next video. I really, really hope that the all the noise was not too much because I did not realize it would be so noisy. So it's that time of day. Yeah. See you next time.